floor. Let's ask Congressman Peter DeFazio. He's a Democrat from Oregon who voted against the original rescue bill, instead introducing a new plan today. Congressman, what are you doing differently? Well, Neil, I'm working with the Republicans, and we're taking a very narrow uh, approach to this. We don't think we need $700 billion to buy risky bets from Wall Street to get liquidity flowing again and commercial loans and bank loans flowing. We believe if you deal with mark to market, uh, if you uh, deal with the issue of the FDIC cap, uh, if you look at what we did during savings and loan, uh, where we actually bring in the regulators and you can have certificates of net worth uh, for banks uh, in exchange for subordination, uh, these things would work. In addition to a permanent ban on naked short selling and a uh, reinstation, uh, reinstatement of the uptick rule, uh, I'm working with Republicans on that. We think we can do this without borrowing $700 billion. What do your friends think is going to do to our credit or the dollar when we borrow $700 billion to bail out firms on Wall Street. And what if it doesn't work, like you just said? Then what do we do? Well, it's a good point, Carmen. My, the issue that I've had explained uh, and, and, and throttled in my brick head is this. They tell me, and I don't buy it, but they tell me this $700 billion that you're borrowing, whatever, you're going to make back and then some when you sell off a lot of these assets. Well, you know, I guess that's the optimistic view, but uh, I don't see it. If that's true, then why don't they buy them? Why isn't there a market for them today if they know there's a positive, definite upside? I mean, come on, some of these things have no value. But as William Isaacs, who ran the FDIC during the savings and loan crisis, said, right now, 75% of these things are performing, but banks are essentially required to mark them to zero value because there is no market for them under the mark-to-market rule. If you go to fair market value, look at the cash flow, look at the performing assets, they would then essentially be recapitalized. They can make loans. Crisis over. We didn't borrow. $700 billion. And you didn't have to go through all this awkward trying to condition, you know, how Paulson spends the money or doesn't spend it. And, you know, the insurance program the Republicans put in, everybody said, oh, it's meaningless. Paulson won't use it. Look at that. It says the Treasury Secretary can issue this insurance in any, to anybody he wishes, and he may, may base the premium on but risk. But let me ask you about what that. What the heck Con else is insurance based well, on? Well, that's, that's a very good point. But leaving aside the insurance, the oversight, do you think what helped Treasury Secretary Paulson was yesterday? We had this huge sell-off. It confirmed the fear of God marketing strategy he was using. And people sure. are now going to say, man, oh, man, maybe uh, the secretary was right. we got to pass this thing. There's going to be a pell-mell rush to approve this thing. And then your fellow members, I know this is not a concern of yours, but your fellow members who are skittish go back to their constituents and have that sell-off as cover for voting for this turkey. I, I fear that. I, I, I hear the train coming down the track. We're trying to derail it. Uh, and I think there's a much more targeted approach that goes to what is his premise, that he wants to free up liquidity for business loans and bank loans without borrowing the $700 billion. I, I just really feel that. I mean, it, there's so many things in this package people don't understand. He can buy any security. He isn't just buying mortgage-backed securities. The, the bill says any security he deems appropriate. He's talking about credit cards. He's right. talking about auto loans. Well, you've obviously done, loans. you know, unlike a lot of your colleagues, Congressman, Republican Democrat, you've done your homework on this thing. Could I ask you a, a general political question. They kept me up late. And tell you what, I'm armed. You talk about them coming up, you know, the creatures coming up the stairways. I'm there. First, I am armed. I have a concealed weapon permit. Not in D.C., of course. All right, all right. Uh, but, but secondly, I'm armed well, with know, a vote. I always and, wondered. And I'm it, saying no. But in those zombie movies, the dudes, they never had guns. I thought that was so weird, but I, I digress. I know. Well, that was, that's well, let what me I ask always you say this. I believe in gun rights. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Um, it, this is not to cast political persons, but do you think that Nancy Pelosi going to the floor, kind of ripping the administration, ripping Republicans when she said she had this bipartisan agreement before there was a vote, botched it, and that, 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 that sort of poisoned the well, and that she was perfectly free to make that statement, but mm -hmm. after the vote. And, and all these guys who went with her in this bipartisan kind of uh, extension of these debates felt that, that she politicized it and she failed basic leadership, Capitol Hill 101. Uh, Neil, been here 22 years, uh, 12 years in the minority, uh, going on 10 years in the majority. And I tell you, if every time I was offended by my leadership 
or the Republican leadership, I flipped my vote, man, I would look like the biggest vote flipper But you know what, history. Congressman? I, know, I don't know you super well, but I would, never, I would never see you doing that ahead of a crucial vote. You might want to politicize it afterwards. You might want to make a political statement, even though I don't think you do even then. Uh, I, I just think that it came at a there pointless time. There was a failure time, to regulate. Right? There was a failure to regulate here. I mean, Chris Cox is an idiot, never should have had that job. I served with him in Congress. He's been asleep at the wheel. He could have taken care of a lot of the downside here with the naked shorts. I know, I know, but was that the, the time? All I'm saying, well, was that the time to do it, Congressman? You're trying to get the votes for this thing. Yeah, hey, you well, say I mean, you have a bipartisan we can try agreement, and, right? We can, try and, no, we can try and... I'm glad it failed. That's all I can say. I don't care what so the it reason had the was desired it result. I'm, I'm, yes, it had the desired result. Uh, the House, the People's House spoke. We have a chance to do something better and much less expensive. All right. But you are frustrated as I was that at the end of Night of the Living Dead, the guy <laughs> gets shot by the police. I mean, that was kind of unfair, right? I mean, yeah, no, that was bad. I digress. <laughs> All right. Uh, Congressman, always good having you on. You're a straight shooter. We appreciate that. Thanks, Neil. All right. Well, Hank Paulson, then, is he a market hero? A guy who says that.